Welcome to Off The Hanger, the fashion podcast where we delve deep into our guests' wardrobes, finding out their favourite fashion pieces and the stories behind them. This week's guest is pop culture and fashion writer Georgia smith Ma. Now, before we get started, if I could ask that you give this podcast a like, a follow, a rating, subscribe, leave a review, any of those things would be much appreciated. I hope you enjoy. Georgia, thank you so much for being part of Off The Hanger. It's lovely to chat with you. I am very much here for the outfit today that you're wearing. Looks thank fabulous. You. Thank you. <laughs> now, were you always into fashion? Because you write a lot about fashion, don't you? Yes. Yes is the, the answer. Just yes, that's the full sentence. Um, when I was a child, I had very strong opinions about what I would and would not wear. Um, I think I refused to like take off like a fairy outfit or like a princess outfit when I was like three. Um, and then it continued and then it just, and then it spiraled. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've had very strong opinions. My mother would have to lie to me in the shop and get all the staff of the shop to lie. Like, oh no, we don't have your size. And I was like three, I was like, oh, okay. Lies, they had my size, she just didn't like it. So I, I, I was very clear about what I liked from a young age, yeah. I love that you were so decisive from so early. I think, you know, sometimes as children, we chop and change and we flit about and we don't really know. And we are really guided by our parents or caregivers taste and choice in fashion. And we end up wearing, I wore some very much 80s monstrosities that my mother must have really liked. And so they definitely looking back were not my vibe at all. (laughs) Yeah, I'm quite lucky my mom had I would say like decent taste um it's more classical so I wasn't dressed in like the 90s typical gear and then the Spice Girls changed that I don't say I don't think it's a good look but I was like I want to be like sporty Spice so that's yeah that's when my taste just went downhill I think you see I was all in that as well. I was totally here for it. I was a kind of 14, 15 year old when their first album came out. So there was definitely lots of occasions where my wardrobe was fully inspired by either Sporty Spice or I, occasionally I would try to be Victoria Beckham, but it never quite pulled off quite as well. I don't think I had the class. And uh, if ever we did fancy dress as the Spice Girls, I just have to be the ginger one without the bust. So, you know, <laughs> I was, I was only four. So I, I just saw them. Like, I think they were my first fashion awakening. And I was like, this is it. This is everything I want to be. And I think because I was, I was four, my mom was like, you are not going to wear a crop top. You are not wearing this. Like, I think she was just horrified. She was like, wear the stuff I like, all the traditional stuff. I was like, I'm going to be a Spice Girl. Not understanding like they were like a lot older than me. Yeah. And would you say that the Spice Girls and their style was your first fashion memory or do you have something even earlier? Well, I have a couple of pictures earlier pre-Spice Girls. You see very traditional, like there's one in a jumper, very, I would say not overly feminine, but quite like traditional feminine, girly. And then um, my mum and my dad were separate. So my mum would always dress me in this. And then the Spice Girls entered and my dad was like, yeah, wear what you want. So you've got the crop top. Yes. Nice. My mom was furious. <laughs> yes. I, I I lived the dream. I lived the dream. I must say I was very happy. Um, and as you can see here, yeah, the Spice Girls poster behind. I had like the, the fake tattoos, the butterfly clips from the 90s. Yes. This was nice. Yes. They were my first fashion awakening experience. I bought the clothes, went to the concerts. Yeah. Full 360. <laughs> That's brilliant. And I think... It's always really interesting where we get our childhood fashion influences from. A lot of it does come from the influence of your parents or your older siblings or, you know, maybe your grandma. Um, But I love for you that it was very much pop culture, the biggest girl band. Yeah. I think I was really lucky. I think I was really lucky because I think, what what would I address like a few years before? Because like, what, Oasis, Blur, like that? I I don't I don't really think that's my energy um yeah I I I think it was the right place the right time and it was the perfect moment for a child who already had strong opinions and what is the oldest piece that you've got in your wardrobe do you tend to hang on to things yes um yeah I I do yeah 
my so I live in Colombia right now, so I don't have the oldest oldest piece. However, I do have. Let me get it. Ah, the stress. I don't know if you can see. So yes, this I would say was like my second fashion awakening. So year seven. So I year seven was like what two thousand and three, two thousand and four. So it was like the noughties were in full bang, like mm-hmm. Boho, Sienna Miller. Then you had like Nicole Richie and Paris Hilton with all that like pink stuff and stuff. So I got this from Portobello Market and it's handmade and it's like a little bit damaged. Like it's really delicate. But when I got this, I was like, I am the coolest person ever. Yeah, I was like 11. I was like, yes, this is this is who I am. This is me and I still have it. And I, I, I love, I'm from West London. Like I live 10 minutes from Portobello when I'm in London. So it's like a really place that's dear to my heart. And I love that it has so many different vibes and places to explore. So that piece just reminds me of that time, but also of Portobello. And the fact that you've still managed to keep it and keep it in good condition is incredible. And it must have quite sentimental value to it as well. Yeah, it just, it reminds me of being like, I know who I am, I know what I want, and this is it, if that makes sense, in terms of of, of my look. Because we had the Spice Girls, and then there wasn't much after, in terms of like, <gasps> fashion icons. I, I think there was Harry Potter, I was super into Harry Potter, but that did not inspire fashion. And then like, the that era just really like, just solidified who I was as a person at 11. <laughs> and so yeah, and I, I, I value craft and creativity. And I know um, at that point, 2004, the seller of of the garment, the maker, said that like places like Topshop and stuff would go and look at what they're doing and make copies. So it's 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 I value creativity and craft, and you know it's a lot of the time it was expensive. It is expensive. So when I can get my hands on it, I'm like yes, please, yes. <laughs> What is the piece in your wardrobe that gets the most compliments? Ah, so I thought about this long and hard, and it's this. I will take my glasses off and replace them with another glasses, another pair of glasses. This, these glasses. Um, They're fabulous. As they are. I I, I think uh, people that don't wear glasses might underestimate <laughs> um, glasses because it's the first thing people see. It, it really is. Um, and interestingly, these glasses get the most compliments from strangers, from Gen Z specifically. I'm like, oh, th- 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 this is new. Usually, like, I'm just like fading into the background, uh, but like, no. Yeah, so I love these. These are great. These were cheap and cheerful as well. So I can see and they add everything. I love them because, like, they really do make or break an outfit. <laughs> mm-hmm. They are incredible. They've got slight Iris Appleby. Yes. Also, um, oh, what's she called? Edna from The Incredible. Yes. Yeah. Which icon. Is icon. Icon. Yeah. Absolute style icon. No. Love her. I love these. These are so good. And like you say, they are make or break to an outfit. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and especially because I can't, I can't accessorize too heavily because of my glasses. I have to be really careful. And also it it just, it gets heavy, like with the glasses in the ear, <laughs> and it gets heavy. <laughs> and like if I had something on my head, it just gets heavy. So I'm very, like, I've been wearing glasses since I was like eight. And like, I think they might be in fashion now, but I don't like the metal ones, like the thin metal one, mm-hmm. I was forced to wear for so long. I And I just, I hated myself and I hated my look. So so now I'm just like, I'm getting glasses that match. So I have like three different pairs right now and I'm looking at buying another one, but they are important to an outfit for sure. Even if it's like sunglasses, like it doesn't matter. They, they add something. You see, I have to embrace the sunglasses. I'm not a glasses wearer and I always feel a bit of a fraud when people were wearing the ones with clear lenses. I remember. I'm like, I want to get involved with this, but I feel like I'm a fraud. <laughs> I remember thinking, Why? why i if it rains it gets on your glasses um if you wear like any type of mask or even a scarf just covering bits called you steamed up why, why would anyone inflict this on them are they going you have to like match your outfit to your glasses like it's a it's a process so i don't i got really angry i remember getting angry like why 
What is the most expensive piece in your wardrobe? You don't have to share how much it was if you don't want to, but you can. Some people do, some people don't. Well, because I, I, I think it's hideously expensive and I do kind of regret it. And um, I have a picture. Uh, oh, it's glasses. Again, they're glasses. I got glasses. So as I said, I didn't like the ones I wore as a kid. So I was like, I'm going to get really nice glasses. And nice glasses meant something fancy at that time. So you remember, I guess that they're not out of fashion, but I remember like 2011, it was more in fashion, the cat eye glasses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got the cat eye glasses, um, obviously 2C. Full disclosure, my lenses are quite thick. So they they did add a lot of the, the money to it. But all in all, these cat eye glasses in 2011 were like 450 pounds. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In 2011. And I remember I dipped into my student loan for that. I was like, these are going to be the best thing in the world. They're fabulous. And to be fair, they, again, they, they were they were like handmade in France with like little diamantes, like three, like in the thing. <sighs> they were a mistake because I, I do regret it because um, what does can I actually go with? Really? in today's like age unless you have that style every day which I didn't and again I was in like second year of university so I was like mixing matching I was a mess so it it didn't go with everything it I just felt like a bit silly towards the end so I I now do not spend too much on my glasses because of this because I'm like no um so they were again really beautifully made like nothing and and they lasted a while but mm -mm, 450 pounds for glasses I think it's a learning curve though isn't it I think we have all been there and spent yeah. a large sum of money on something that has not turned out the way that we hope and so I very much have done the same thing I remember being 18, 19 and I'd uh, gone to Paris with uh, my boyfriend at the time and it was my dream to kind of go to Paris and buy a pair of designer shoes like really expensive shoes why I was 19 I don't know what my brain was thinking and so I bought these incredible Rene Cavalli shoes that were just stunning but Jesus Christ they were the most uncomfortable things I have ever owned and that's saying something i have 200 pairs of shoes i'm a big shoe nerd but these were vicious and what is even worse is that these shoes recently maybe in the past kind of two or three years have come back into fashion and everybody is wearing these shoes and i'm like all i can see is the pain all i can think about when i see these poor girls in these shoes is i'm like i know how uncomfortable they were and i spent i think they were 380 euros and this was when I was like 18 19 so this is like mm, 2000 yeah so 99 2000 I'm like oh my god what was I thinking what a waste of money <laughs> it's so easy to do especially I think with things like shoes bags or glasses because they're things that you in theory need you wear them every day however the practicality of them and the dream of them they they just don't merge and so it's hot it's heartbreaking it's heartbreaking yeah it is i sold them quite quickly after buying them i have to say i got rid of them because i was just like i can't bear the pain of these shoes they're a beautiful thing but i cannot wear you you have to go i wish you could resell them that's that's so cool i did not resell my glasses because i mean it's not the same reseller. Are you? In the price, just without the lenses, maybe. You know what? I look back and I'm like, I have a big face. What was I doing wearing more glasses? Like, like there's there's nothing I can justify. Like, I like the pictures. I'm like, oh, oh. And also, when it's your glasses, it's something that you have on so often that they're in all of the pictures. Oh. It's not one time thing. Oh, <laughs> them. I there's I went to. A Taylor Swift concert, 2014, 1989, was tour with things like American shorts, American flag shorts, and like a Taylor Swift top, like a tank top, with these cat eye glasses. <laughs> Why? 
Like it doesn't, th- th- there's nothing. And it's not even like, oh, it's a cool clash. It just looked terrible. I'm, I'm still really angry about it. <laughs> I love the passion. I love the passion you feel about this. Hopefully we have both learned from our past mistakes yep. and you're not still, you know, purchasing these types of things now. What is the newest piece that you have? I thought long and hard about this and it's actually like low-key quite embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, in Colombia, lots of people, uh, like foreigners come and go. So they, they sell stuff on Facebook, Facebook Marketplace. Uh, it's called garage sales. So uh, I bought a bed from this person that was leaving and her daughter, who is a child, uh, her scarf. So this is her scarf, which apparently she originally got from Liberty. I was like, I don't care, it's great. So it's like, this is the scarf. Oh. I know, I, I, it's like a child scarf, but you know what? And so I have like this, this little neck thing, necktie ring. And so I just like do it up and then I put like the, the necktie thing here and I hide this. So it's like a necklace type thing. Yeah. Cute. And I bet that looks great with a coat as well. I bet it yeah. looks fabulous just blended in with the coat. It does. It does. Or even because it's a bit too hot to wear a coat here sometimes. I just like wear it um, with like a dress or something just to add like a bit of like pizzazz. But it's, yeah. It. My, my partner was like a children's scarf. Like really? I was like, yes. Oh, don't. I'm all for buying things out of the children's department. There is a jacket that I, that came up as a Facebook advert um from the the brand from the shop and I was like that jacket is immense and when I clicked on it it's a child's jacket um <laughs> yeah, but if you I was like me. me if it goes up to maybe like a 14 15 year old I can possibly still get in there so maybe I'll just give it a go but it's sold out in the bigger sizes so it's now on my vintage watch list. Oh, uh, just in case Lisa decides to list one. <laughs> I have a vintage watch list too. Yeah, mm-hmm. vintage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just can't fit into children's clothes. So it's like a t-shirt. Could be like a crop top. But I, yeah, I click on it. It's, it's always the Facebook ads. Oh my god, that looks that's so. Oh, children's. Yeah, I was like three to four years old. What? But it's so cool. Yeah. Why are they making just these epically cool pieces? Just in children's sizes. They should extend those. We should be able to have a request button. This is great. Make it for an adult. You know, I think children are allowed to have fun. Whereas like adults meant to be like more serious. Like they make more serious pieces. It's like, no, request now. Exactly. This was like a little kind of mal grey bomber jacket, but with all sequins coming down the front. Super cool. Mm. Right up my street. Except it's for a child. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'll find it one day. I'll find it one day and see if I can get one 14 to 15, age 14 to 15. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most sentimental piece in your wardrobe? Sentimental, sentimental. I'm going to have to look at my notes because... Okay, let's have a look. Sentimental, sentimental. Okay, so I think it has to be... Uh, my scarf. <laughs> I don't know if you can probably Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's epic. It's huge. And this is also uh, what sums me up the most. It's sentimental because it sums me up the most. So I got them. That's where I got that from. So it's by a designer called Charlotte Simone. And um, so I was like following her, like, not like a stalker, but like following her, like her work for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always feel weird saying that. Um, and basically, uh, I was just watching this scarf I was like, what is scarf I originally got into her because a few years ago she did like um I have a couple in England these hats like they're caps I, I never wear caps at all like I'm not a cap person my face is not a cap person however these caps are like like felt like material and they have two of the the, the pom-poms and they're like pink mm-hmm. and white and then I have another great one with like a one pom-pom that's how I got into her so she makes like these kind of slightly weird cool things. And so I was studying for my master's and I was working. And I was like, I deserve something nice. And then this went on sale in Liberties. And I and then it arrived like in in Liberties. And my mom said she'd never seen me move that quickly. I was like, right, I'm off, I'm gone. Because I was like, I need to be a baby. And I like it because A, it's and it's practical. Like it's really practical. But my I my in the t- at the time my master's like People were very, uh, 
conventional in how they dressed. And it was all very conservative, very contem- contemporary because it was a master's in science. So it was quite, it was the science, like businessy economics type thing. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So I used to come into class and be like, hi, like really dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, like, yeah. just to have a laugh. So I think, yeah, it's my most sentimental piece because it sums me up and it's beautiful. Oh. I am here for it. It is beautiful and unique and huge and it looks gorgeous quality as well. I think that's so important. Yeah. I've looked at other scarves. I cannot find one this big. Like they're all like very, very small, which I guess is fine. But this is just, it goes on for days and it has like little tassels. I don't know if you can see how big the tassels are. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's like It's epic. What a showstopper. What a showstopper. Now, would you like to join my fashion disaster club? Do you have a wardrobe malfunction or a fashion faux pas that you can share? You see, that face facial expression tells me, yes, you do. <laughs> Let me sign you right up. <laughs> so the worst thing is, I I have so many pictures of me in, in these things. <laughs> and I have no other pictures of me in like the nice things or the or the cool things or the sentiments. Always these things. So again, I'm going to start it off with this. I think maybe this is where it started. So we have this right. shirt, not necessarily a crop top, but it's the graphic tee. I have mm-hmm. dozens of pictures. I even have more graphic tees. I, I really have tried to cut myself off. I really have. <laughs> and I wear less now. I do wear less now. And an occasional graphic tee is okay, but all the, all the time, all, all, all the time, is it is it necessary? We have number one. So I've kept like three. Joan Jett. Okay, we can forgive this. You are in the 90s, so you may remember Daria. On a- oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. This is, you listen, this is what I knew. I should stop grabbing cheese, but I was like, oh my God, Daria. And then, um, like, this is obviously very recent, this one. There's no excuse. This is the man of the moment, Pedro Pascal. It says, <gasps> don't, I love <laughs> I will have I will have no bad thing. Do not slander his name. He is my absolute yeah. <laughs> dream. Yeah. I watch all the TikToks of him. Uh-huh. He is such good value. Yeah. For some reason, I don't know why, but um he was in the UK and he had gone to Margate. I heard this. I don't know why. And there were pictures of him in Margate and I was like, oh, I know why he Margate. went to Margate. I know why. So why did he go to Margate? I, I... I follow him, not stalk him, but I do follow like, the I don't care. I'm right there with you. I'll join you in stalking him. So um, <laughs> he likes the UK, but he went to Margate because there was a, if I'm not mistaken, an exhibition by a woman. Right. And the title was something like, I'm not obsessed with Pedro Pascal. It's just my ADHD. As someone with ADHD <laughs> and a slight obsession with Pedro Pascal, I was like, I want to see this. Like, what? So he went. <laughs> but then the- I have <laughs> never related more. <laughs> yeah, the, the exhibition was closed, but but they got a picture of him, like the the gallery owners, I think. Yeah. Yep. But he went. So I think that shows he's up for a good laugh. <laughs> oh my God. I love him. I think he's just brilliant. He's got such good banter. Yeah. He is super attractive. I am just. Yeah, I am here for Pedro Pascal, very much so. <laughs> yeah, but do I need to announce it to the world via a graphic tee? So I think, yeah, it started off in the Spice Girls era, but then the the 2000s really was the age of the graphic tee. And I'm trying to like wean myself off. So I guess it's an ongoing fashion faux pas for me. Like for some people, they can pull it off and that's fine. Yeah, no, not for me. So I'm trying to wean myself off. Like, and again, I've got like 10 pictures of it throughout the ages you see if it was just the pedro pascal tea i wouldn't let you in the club you wouldn't be allowed to join on that basis because i'll hear no bad things said of him but based on it being a recurring offense yeah. then i feel that you are welcome to join i'll send you your badge in the post <laughs> I, I i i feel shame every time i wear one i'm like you have so <laughs> many other things and i think it's just one of those things where it's like it's a comfort blanket or like mm-hmm. a, or like a dummy type thing where it's like it's just it's just it's just there it's just nice i could do better i could do better and again it, everyone has their own style no offense if you love graphic tees like i just i need to like grow up i think <laughs> <laughs> i think there will always be those things in our wardrobe though that we gravitate to 
knowing full well that they're horrendous, but they're just, like you say, that safety blanket, that kind of feeling of security. I don't want anybody to see me wearing it, but, you know, I'm really quite happy when I am wearing it. Yes, I I must admit, like, when I'm in Colombia, I'm a lot more comfortable wearing it because I'm like, who's going to see me? But in London, (laughs) um, there is more emphasis on fashion. So I'm like, I'm not wearing this. No, Uh, yeah, no. I have a safe space at least a little bit. (laughs) Now, what are your favorite shoes? So I, 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 I'm I, not like you with shoes. I don't have many shoes. Um, That's okay. Because, again, I do have ADHD, so I'm very, I get irritated by texture and discomfort. And I, okay. I, I tried, and I, maybe it was growing up in the, I know growing up, but like, I started to go out 2007, eight. And then the 2010s and the heels were like this big. And I, 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 I and the massive platform and the, yeah. yeah. And it was for everything. I think even for my work experience, when I was 14, I wore heels because I was like, this is, I'm Devil West Prada. This is so cool. Right mm-hmm. up. So I, I just, I don't because I just can't. So I have, and again, my trusty old Dr. Martens. So these are like the, the Chelsea boots and they're like a purpley brown. I love these. These are like, I wear them too, maybe too often. Rain or shine, I wear them. Ultimate classic. I think once you break through that initial barrier of pain of breaking in a Doc Martin, I think they will serve you well. I think they're the type of shoe that they just need you to prove your level of commitment to them. And then once you have done that, they will return that favor to you for years and years and years. I will say that I found a secret. Um, I don't know if it applies to everybody, but it applies to me. So it's now a secret I'm sharing. Um, I'm a half size. So I originally got the seven. And I wore like first year of uni tights with two pairs of socks and everything would be covered in blood. And then I got a brown pair with like sheepskin inside. So it made it slightly smaller, like a half size. Perfect. And these ones right there, half size, and they don't hurt nearly as much. So half size, Doctor. If you are half size, Doctor Martin's half size are the secret. Yes. Ah, uh, there we go. That's the key. Okay. Good tip. I love that. My other ones. Oh, they're cute as well. Look at those. Whoa. So these are like when I want to make a slight effort, but I I don't want to like be uncomfortable. So these, and I love the fur. They just add. They just add to it. They are a little bit uncomfortable here. They're a little bit too narrow, but hey, yeah, I love them. They're from Colombia, actually. So yeah. You see, I've never managed to get on board with any pair of loafers. My feet are just not made for loafers. Heels, I'm actually fine in. But a pair of loafers will shred my feet constantly. I'm like, what is wrong with my feet and loafers? Why can't why can't we be friends? Oh, I love them because <laughs> my hair and it's like really thin, like way too thin. Like it's and it's weird because it doesn't match the rest of my body. Like I'm not like a, a thin person. So um it, 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 it's, it get really irritated, but these like it allows freedom. It's like yes, I'm I'm fine. I wish I wish I could wear heels. I wish I yeah, uh, but no, no. <laughs> I think that's a very interesting thing though. I don't have ADHD, but I'm always super bothered by textures and labels. I have to. I can bear discomfort, especially when it comes to shoes and certain things. If I know that it's a bit tight or whatever, but I like how it looks, so I'm just going to wear it anyway. But very much. The labels and things. I have to cut labels out of everything because if it's rubbing against my skin, yeah. it just makes me crazy. I can't bear it. Did you... I have a theory about my shoe thing. What shoes did you wear in secondary school? Um, I tend to wear... I always wore trousers in secondary school. So I always wore boots. So I always wore heeled boots. And okay. obviously, Spice Girl era... era was of the time, so platform boots. I remember turning up to secondary school in a pair of six inch heels with a like two inch platform on the front and the longest trousers on so that I couldn't get told off for wearing them. I It was like I had grown like four inches overnight. I was so suddenly tall in these things, which I wasn't. Everyone was like, why are you so tall today? I just got massive boots on and I walked a mile to school and back again in these things every day okay so I think that was the secret um getting used to it in secondary school but yeah mum was really strict with uniform like she took it really seriously so I had oh my god so embarrassing velcro 
shoes up into the right. age of like 16. Um, and I wasn't not even like flats at the time, like the cute flats. My mom was like, no, they're really bad for your feet. Wear something good for your feet. So I got like my 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 friend said they look like orthopedic shoes. Um, oh. And uh, yeah, and I had like braces and those horrible metal glasses at the time. I like bushy hair. Um, yeah, so I, yeah. Me, so I was a nightmare. But yeah, so I never wore like, I, and not that they weren't real shoes, but like real normal shoes like fashion shoes I think it was too late it was just too late for me so I yeah I think our teenage years are so formative and I equally was like you I had horrendously bushy hair thank god for the invention of like GHDs because (laughs) I've never ever learned to blow dry my hair my hair (laughs) is just wants to be perpetually massive all of the time and so I think it was a really big thing of my teenage years, having fashion disasters, having terrible hair, having awful skin, going through all of these things, being really self-conscious, because I think it A, gave me a really thick skin, but B, then inspired me in later life to be much more adventurous with the things I wear. And I really worry for teenagers of today, because they all look pristine perfect with fabulous foundation. There's not a tide mark in sight. Yes. I don't understand what how they're going to progress. I worry for them. I think about this maybe too much um, because I think I saw on TikTok someone said um, there's no tween era. And by tween, it's like that gawky stage where like 12, 11, it could even go into like 13, 14, 15. So when I was a tween, it's like Harry Potter, Mary Kate and Ashley. It was quite um, like lip balm, scented lip balm type thing, yes. like, like the fake tattoo stickers it was all quite like not serious but now it it is heavy duty skincare that costs a lot of money it's it's an aesthetic um as opposed to it expressing yourself perhaps or or creating weird things that look terrible but you were still in the process i don't know what that says about creativity or self-expression it is worrying but i i feel bad for them because everything is on video everything's recorded mm-hmm. that's a lot of and then they don't have that freedom to experiment yeah because they're not just trying things out and going actually this is a disaster i'm not doing that again because it is all as you say documented it's all filmed for tiktok and posted in photos on instagram and so i don't think they have that freedom to fail like we did yeah. when i look back at pictures of me now at like 15 16 oh my god they are absolute travesties but they're not everywhere on the internet. Nobody can search them up and find them. Yeah. They're in a box in my cupboard. It's not something that anybody else can see. So I, yeah, it really concerns me. And I've got a boy who's 10 and we're very much getting into that kind of era of being influenced by people about their haircuts and things. Yeah. We had a good 30 minute conversation yesterday about some YouTuber's haircut and how that's the haircut that he wants and can he do it precisely like this and can I help him get it like that and can we do and I'm like oh my god (laughs) it's it's very specific it's very specific in a way that I just don't think was specific and I have a younger friend who's in her early 20s and she's like what is this aesthetic called what is this aesthetic called like that does it have to be so defined? Does it have to be named? labeled? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very it boxy in a box, in a box, in a box. Mm-hmm. Even when it's not in a box, it's still very curated. Uh, so I just it's it's a shame. And the thing is, like I saw, I've seen some videos, and it's like the children filming other children, and like even if they're sixteen, they're still children. But it's children filming other children. So even if you personally don't take videos or, or photos, people other people will without your permission. Yeah, I just, yeah, it's such an interesting kind of topic and something that obviously we're evolving. These things are happening. This is how life is now with phones and, you know, social media. And I just, yeah, I worry about their ability to experiment and fail and have these disasters because then how will they appreciate it? I appreciate as a woman in my 40s that I now know what things to wear that looks good on me and that I like and that really suit me and that I know how to control my ridiculous hair. Um, whereas in my teenage years, these things were all just wild and free and a bit of a mess. <laughs> Even in my 20s, so I turned, I'm like 32 this year. 
And I thank God, my 20s, I just felt this pressure along with my teen years um, to be a certain type of woman, to be a, a certain type of category. Obviously, I experimented so awful. Thank God there's not many pictures. And I, and I, and I, you know, it was about like quality of clothes as well. So I learned like good quality versus like really bad quality. And now in my thirties, I feel like free to like, just cut my hair. Like I can look as weird as I want. Um, I don't necessarily have to look a certain way. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm really glad. I look forward to more of this energy going more into my thirties because the twenties. Let's all bring that energy. Yeah. yeah. Let's all bring that energy. Yeah. Is there a piece that you are lusting after? Something irrespective of cost and practicality, just if the universe decided to drop it on your doorstep, what would it be? Okay, so there's two. Um, anything from the row, uh, Mary Kate and Ashley, the- I still have an obsession with them, even now. They, everything they do, I'm like, yes. But the row, the quality, anything, a, a shoes, bag, a t-shirt, I, I will accept, yes, please, someone, um, the row. The second is, um, really like it's not accessible it's never gonna happen um i don't think i would fit so i went to the vna um to see the diva workshop um i don't know not the workshop the, the diva exhibition which 10 out of 10 you should go see go see immediately and then i went to a lecture on coco chanel because i couldn't go to the exhibition because it was all sold out then after i went to the toilet and this woman was like, oh, what do you think? I was like, great. She's like, have you been? I was like, oh, no, I couldn't get a ticket. She's like, I'm a member. Just like, oh, wait for me and then I'll, I'll bring you in. So she she got me to the yeah. exhibition. It was so lucky. I was like, is this me? Because I never have this luck. I never win anything. I, I never have the luck. So I was like, oh, this is amazing. And I went to the exhibition and um, I have a photo. It's this, it's all the clothes, by the way, were super tiny. Super, 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 mm. super, super, super. I don't even know. I don't think I fit in that when I was 10. They're very tiny. So this is so impractical. It's like um, trousers and like a jacket, like a two-piece. Everything is sequin. It's black. Everything is black. <gasps> everything, everything, everything. But it has like these um, like 80s, even though it wasn't the 80s, kind of like flares, like uh, lace kind of things here. And I was just like, this is it. This is my outfit. I want this, but in different materials, different colors, mm-hmm. different sequin colors. <laughs> um, yeah, it was so beautiful. And I've never seen anything like it. And I don't think I will see anything like it again. It was just so, ex- it was very flamboyant. I think the word is is, is is flamboyant. Yeah. And I'd never seen that side of Chanel. So I was like. It sounds exquisite. It just sounds beautiful. I did not manage to get tickets for the Chanel exhibition either, sad times. But I am looking forward to the, um, there's a series that comes out this week, I think on Apple, that's about Chanel and Dior. Oh. And it's a dramatized kind of series. It's got loads of famous actors in it and things. And I'm just like, I'm here for the costuming of this. This is why I'm going to watch this, just purely to drool over the costuming. Okay, I'm now going to, I didn't know that at all. But they did add more tickets to Chanel, so try so they, they extended it. Ooh. And oh, I will keep looking. If it's sold out, put your name up, and like maybe a day before, they're like, someone's dropped out. Do you, you want to come? Because I spoke to another lady, and that happened to her. So yeah, and yeah, great. I was like really upset, and I was like, oh, but it's fine. And then I went, and I was like, I have never seen the craftsmanship like this before. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely recommend it, even if you're not like even if people aren't like a huge Chanel fan. Um, which I understand, but the, the level of craftsmanship, I, I, it's in, pictures will never do it justice. Like there was this sequin dress, it's like kind of backless, um, black, and in pictures, I, I took a picture, it, it doesn't look anything. Um, in real life, it's ex, I, I, exquisite. There, there are no words. So if you can, I definitely, definitely recommend it. Also the diva one, the, the diva one is also good. There was like Rihanna's outfit. And I was like, Rihanna's outfit is beautiful. I'm going to literally, as soon as we finish our chat, I am going to go Google for some tickets and see if I can find some tickets to treat myself because I love a fashion day out and I love really kind of immersing yourself into people's craftsmanship and work and just admiring that and taking it all in, I think is incredible. People have worked so ridiculously hard on these things. They should really be appreciated. Yeah, and it... it actually made me deeply deeply sad because I've never seen anything like that in my life because everything is so poorly made and I I remember I bought a skirt from Primark 
again around the boho time, 2004, 2005, or 2003 even, and it was silk, silk lined. And that's not, it, it doesn't exist now. Um, even if you buy so-called good quality, it's not lasting as long. So we, we're literally losing the craftsmanship from 20 years ago. It's, it's going downhill. So I, I just, I was just like, nothing is, is like this. So it was really like something special. I really appreciated it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, George, it's been so fabulous chatting with you. I have really, really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being part of Off The Hanger. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. I love talking fashion. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please remember to check out more episodes of Off The Hanger. <laughs>